Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and today we are delving into the absolutely stunning world of Dan Da Dan. After watching the first episode, and then in the same nights reading almost all of the manga, I found myself at awe with the amazing world that the mangaka Yukinobu Tatsu had created. Each new threat that our main cast must go up against expands his universe in a creative way, leaving a lot up to the interpretation of the reader. Its fights are raw, and the core story of finding our boys nuts is just hilarious. Either way, for anyone interested, all the parts of the story that have already been edited are also live on Patreon, so if you do want to peep them early, I'll leave a link down below. Either way, enough of me rambling on as per usual, leave a like and subscribe so I know you're all keen as hell on the next part, and sit back and relax as we delve into Dan Da Dan's Super Arc. Later on at the ISA house, Ira is invited over for a meal with Momo, Okuran, Psycho, and the Turbo Granny. Momo, believing that Ira holds a grudge against her for dropping a basin on her head previously, apologizes for the incident. However, she also demands that Ira apologize to Okaran for humiliating him during that time. Ira admits that she did hold a grudge, but reveals that she views Momo as a demon she must defeat to protect the world. This leads to an argument between Momo and Ira, with Momo denying the claim. Before leaving, Ira asks Okaran why she chose to rescue her despite her seeing him as a demon as well. Okran simply replies that it's natural to help someone in trouble. Soon after, Momo, Psycho, and the Turbo Granny successfully return Okran's Kintama to his crotch, much to his relief and happiness. The next day at school, Momo discusses with Okran their plan to find his other Kintama, but he mentions wanting to focus on a report first. Momo agrees and spends her lunch with her two friends, however, she grows suspicious that Okran is hiding something from her. Miko suggests that Okran might be associating with another girl, though Momo denies it. Despite this, she starts to picture him with Ira in her head. While getting drinks for herself now and Miko, Momo can't shake the uneasy feeling about Okran. Meanwhile, at the edge of school, Okran is secretly working out to strengthen himself against future threats. Over there in the corner of the school, he is unexpectedly discovered by Ira, who tries to kiss him to confess her feelings, leaving him completely in shock. Okran tries to distance himself from her advances, but he accidentally falls on top of her. At that exact moment, and of course it's at that exact moment, Momo arrives and catches the two in a compromising position. Feeling utterly betrayed, she walks away thinking Okran lied about the report to spend time with Ira and refuses to ever even hear his explanation. Later, feeling down and unable to concentrate in class, Momo suddenly finds herself transported into a flooded, empty space, where she sees a large eel-like figure in the distance. She hides from the creature, but the noise she accidentally makes caused the eel to react by shooting a water blast in her direction, barely missing her. As the eel moves away, Momo starts to wonder where Okaran is. Meanwhile, Okaran finds himself in an empty space, where he meets Ira and explains that he suspects an alien has arrived at their school. He recalls being in an empty space during the Flatwoods monster's appearance and theorizes that they can only escape by defeating the alien. Confirming this for him, the two are then soon attacked by a humanoid crab alien. Okran, you know, instantly transforms into his turbo granny form to protect Ira and himself, but is quickly subdued by the alien's psychokinesis. The attackers are revealed to be the Serpo once again, returning to capture Okaran for his yokai powers, which intrigued them after their first encounter with the Turbo Granny. With the Serpo's psychokinesis neutralizing his powers, Okaran becomes helpless as they prepare to perform surgery on him. However, Ira somehow, in that moment, awakens her acrobatic silky powers and saves Okaran, further convincing her that she is the world's chosen one. With her newfound agility, Ira battles the crab alien and the Serpo, while Okran, now stripped naked during the Serpo's surgical preparations, desperately searches for his clothes. During the battle, Ira gains the upper hand thanks to her agility, but after being pounded by the Serpo's psychokinesis, she is hit by a powerful punch sending her crashing down. Now aware that Ira has yokai powers as well, the Serpo decide to capture her too and to subdue both Ira and Okran. However, Momo arrives just in time and uses her psychic abilities to cancel the Serpo's control over them, giving Okaran the chance to launch an attack on the crab alien. Instantly, the Serpo are shocked and fearful of facing Momo again, revealing that they had unleashed the water creature to avoid another confrontation with her. While Momo supports Okaran by continually cancelling out the Serpo's powers, Okaran and Ira team up to fight the crab alien, who has been physically enhanced by his superiors. Their battle is interrupted though when the flooded void begins to overflow with walls and ceilings transforming into water. As they float above the water, Momo, Okaran, and Ira look down to see the water creature swimming below them. 
Not really getting a situation he's in, Okron excitedly identifies it as Nessie. The trio though quickly tries to escape as Nessie starts attacking his Serpo. However, the enhanced crab alien isn't finished with him yet and continues his assault underwater, sending shockwaves that cause Ira to be flung upwards towards the watery ceiling where she begins to drown. With the enhanced crab alien blocking Momo's ability to physically grab Ira and the Turbo Granny's powers limiting Okoran's ability to swim, they struggle to figure out how to save her. Their inability to cooperate is obviously due to Momo still being upset with Okoran over the earlier misunderstanding. Sensing Momo's lingering frustration, Okoran firmly insists that he will explain everything and clear up the misunderstanding, but is cut off by another attack from the enhanced crab alien. After diving down to shield Momo from the attack, Girl comes up with a plan to use his psychic powers to control Okoran like a speedboat, allowing them to reach Ira in time and rescue her from drowning. After Momo and Ira then strip down to their underwear, as ordered by Momo since, you know, their extra water resistance was making it hard for them to move, the three prepare to face their enemies, planning to fight with all of their strength. Just before they dive down to confront the aliens, Momo, Okoran and Ira look down to see a Serpo fused with the crab alien and Nessie. Continuing to use Okoran as a living speedboat, the trio tries to avoid being hit by the Serpo Dover Demon's Nessie Water Blast attack. Having expended all of the water in its body, the Serpo Dover Demon's Nessie recharges by sucking in water through its gills, prompting Momo, Okoran, and Ira to realize its weakness. It cannot continuously fire its blasts. Ira then attempts to prevent the fused creature from launching any more blasts by targeting its gill neck. However, the merged creature retaliates by punching her away with its mantis shrimp arm, sending a barrage of shockwave punches towards the three. While trying to dodge the attacks, Momo receives a hint from Okoran about how they could possibly defeat the fused alien, but become separated from the others after the alien lands a hit on them. Viewing Momo as the most dangerous of the three, Dover Demon Nessie chooses to target her with the intention of beating her to death first. However, before it can even land a hit, Momo uses her powers to lower the water level, causing the Serpo, Dover Demon Nessie's arms to rip apart just as she had planned. She had previously deduced that the creature would not be able to handle its mantis shrimp strength if it was out of the water and its body would fall apart. The monster then attempts to trap Momo in its mouth and dives underwater, intending to drown her and recharge for another blast at close range. However, Ira seizes the opportunity and grabs the fused alien's neck with her hair. Okoran then uses it as a pathway to run along, compensating for the Turbo Granny's inability to swim. He propels himself at tremendous speed, tearing the Serpod Dover Demon Nessie in half and saving the girls. With the Serpo defeated, Momo, Okoran, and Ira manage to escape from the empty space, returning to their normal school environment with a sense of relief. However, they soon find themselves in an embarrassing predicament when their classmates catch sight of them in the halls, clad only in their underwear. This leads to a panicked dash away from the scene, necessitating an explanation to the school's nurse. After the nurse departs, Momo voices her curiosity about why the Serpo are targeting individuals like Okoran and Ira for their yokai powers instead of going after the yokai themselves. Okoran proposes a theory that the presence of a yokai on Earth is thwarting an alien invasion, and the Serpo must abduct people with yokai powers to study them and enhance their own technology. As Momo and Ira weigh in on this theory, the conversation shifts back to their recent embarrassment, prompting Ira to suggest that they actually pin the blame on Momo. Not wanting to deal with the hassle of making even more excuses, Momo reluctantly agrees just as her friends arrive to take her away. Once alone with Okoran, Momo demands an explanation for the earlier incident involving him and Ira. He reveals that he was secretly training by himself and had to fend off Ira's advances. This leads to a playful teasing from Momo when Okran admits he was trying to impress her with his training. Just as he then prepares to leave, Momo attempts to share her thoughts, but is interrupted by the arrival of her friends who are eager for an explanation about the earlier situation. After providing them with a vague excuse for her inability to elaborate, Momo hears Miko speculate that she probably got into a fight with Ira over Okran, a claim she instantly denies. Meanwhile, Ira finds herself confronted by her classmates after the earlier debacle, only to hear them conclude that Momo is to blame. Following this, a nasty rumor then spreads throughout the school, painting Momo as a bad person. Feeling guilty as her classmates begin to insult Momo, Ira steps forward and bravely confesses that the rumor is untrue and that she is the one who circulated it. After her confession, Ira leaves the classroom and sits outside, feeling disheartened about having damaged her own reputation. Momo approaches her, deducing from the absence of Ira's friends that Ira didn't go through with her plan to shift the blame onto her. 
Just as Ira attempts to deny this, both of the girls are startled by the sudden reappearance of the Dover Demon, who is oozing a mysterious white substance. She pause, man. Motivated by the need to earn a living for his family, the Dover Demon prepares to resume his previous assault. However, he collapses before Momo and Ira are utterly exhausted and injured. Upon waking up from a dream about his son, the Dover Demon finds himself in the ISA household where Momo, Okoran, Psycho, and Ira have actually taken care of him. He expresses his heartfelt gratitude to them, explaining that it's the first time he's ever experienced kindness and assures them that he has no intention of harming them again. As they gather for dinner, the Dover Demon reveals his struggle to earn money for his son's blood transfusion. Deeply moved by this, Okoran offers to part with his Kintama for the Dover Demon to sell, but Momo objects, insisting that the alien needs to establish a steady income, a sentiment that the Dover Demon agrees with. Preparing to leave in order to not be a burden to them now, he is halted by Seiko, who requests to analyse his blood after recognising its unique scent. Upon confirming that the alien's blood is akin to milk, Seiko offers the Dover Demon a cow from a farmer she knows, which would probably help solving his financial dilemma. As Momo, Okran, Seiko, and Ira watch the cow being loaded onto the Dover Demon spacecraft, the alien expresses his profound gratitude, promising to assist them should they ever need help. Shortly thereafter, Momo finds herself prostrating before Seiko, along with Okran and Ira, pleading with her grandmother to buy new uniforms for the trio. While Seiko is willing to purchase uniforms for Okoran and Ira, she instructs Momo to perform a Hiroshi Abe facial expression for her amusement, having seen through her ulterior motives to exploit the financial resources of adults. Momo reluctantly agrees, and is soon compelled to answer the door when a visitor arrives. To her shock, the visitor turns out to be Gigi, whom Okoran learns from Seiko as Momo's childhood friend and first crush. Well, that there brings us to the very end of the third arc of Dan Dan, the Serpo arc. If you have enjoyed this video and want more like it, then subscribe and leave a like as it really helps out with pushing my content to a bunch of new amazing people. Plus, I'd love to know what you all think of me doing shorter videos like this as I try and catch up and cover all of Dan Dan. Also, on top of that, if you want to see the next parts even earlier, then make sure to check out the Patreon, which is linked down below, or become a YouTube channel member. Either way, for now it's been your professional degenerate Diavolo, and I will see you all in a bit. Bye.